All right, so today I wanna go over my final touches before I print out one of my beats, finalize it, and put it out to any streaming platform. Uh, what you see on top of this desk, this has been my just entire setup studio right now that I've been having fun with the most. Uh, keyword is having fun. That's what it's all about for me. And I have a computer right behind me where I can mix. I got hundreds of plugins, but I noticed that I tend to not have fun no more. Instead, I'm just spending hours mixing. This right here just keeps the fun vibe going for me. But one of the tools that I do really want to focus on is this analog heat by Electron. This is the last device my music touches before I print it and export it, put it out to the world, put it out on Spotify, Apple Music, any streaming platform. Speaking about putting your music out in different streaming platforms, I do want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, which is DistroKid. Ever since I started releasing my music in different streaming platforms, it has always been through DistroKid. One of the reasons why I enjoy DistroKid so much is because it's so easy to use. Not only is it easy, but it's super fast. You upload your track and within 24 hours, you could be heard across all major streaming platforms, such as Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, now TikTok. Instagram, and many more different streaming platforms. Now, something that really stood out to me about DistroKid is using the Content ID, which is an add-on as you're uploading your music. Content ID is really, really important for me because that allows my music to have its own fingerprint. And if anybody else wants to use one of my beats on their YouTube videos, I will forever get royalties off of my own beat. And another reason why you might want to consider using DistroKid is because it's $19.99 a year and you can upload as many tracks as you want. That's right. There's no limit to how much music you can upload. So sign up using my link below in the description to get 7% off your first year's membership. Now, a quick rundown of what I have on top of this desk, and it's actually funny because this is a small little desk, but this is my entire studio right now, and uh, I have my MPC Live Mark II, which I've been loving. That's where I sample, chop up, arrange my music, uh, just put everything together when it comes down to my production. Also, mixing. Uh, the MPC Live Mark II, I don't want to get too much into detail with this, but this thing has tons of plugins that you could use. It at least gives me the plugins that I need when it comes down to mixing, which is an EQ, compressors, and limiters. Uh, with those three uh, plugins or processors, I could add plugins to my master bus before I send out my signal into this small little platform uh, by Ele Electro Harmonics. This platform is a stereo compressor, and I've been having so much fun with this. This platform has been awesome. First of all, is a stereo compressor which is awesome because you could run your stereo mix in through the compressor, give it a touch of compression, come out of the compressor into the analog heat, and then just printing out my beat. That's been very fun for me. And that is what it's all about. That's what I want to focus. And that's one thing I promise myself that I want to stay true with myself is just have fun with music. Do not get too in depth with mixing and mastering. Like I just really want to have fun. And this right here allows me to do that. Now, before I go in any further, I, I do want to save you some time. I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to show you, I'm going to let you listen to the beat before it touches any of this. And then I'll turn on what I'm doing with this external processing. So you can listen to what it's doing afterwards, just so you can have a comparison. So let's listen to the raw version and then the processed version. So there's definitely a difference when we're A being the dry versus the processed signal. Uh, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to really push these settings so we make sure we're listening to what this is doing. The way I like to set up my compressor, I smash my compression just the way we're listening to it right now. And I adjust my attack and my release. And I adjust my release. And then once I kind of find the sweet spot for my attack and release, I'll bring back down the compression. Now, 
Now, what I really like about this compressor is that it's just gluing the whole entire mix together. It's just putting it all together so it sounds like one finished track. Uh, once I do that touch of compression, actually what's really cool about this platform, not that I wanna make it too focused on the platform, but it also has this drive option, which this drive option will add some, some pretty cool sound to your overall mix. I'll hit play, let's engage this, and you have your tone, your drive, and your volume, and you can just come up with some weird effects right here. Just kind of like drive your signal. So it's just like some extra processing you can add to your beat. Again, if you're printing your beat, uh, just drive some of these effects, minor effects, but it's really cool that it has those options if you want to use those. So after I process my signal with some compression, I go into this analog heat by Electron. This device right here is so funny because when I first picked it up, I plugged it in, I started using it, and I like what it was doing. I didn't really think much of it until I unplugged it and stopped using it. Then I felt like, oh, okay, I need to bring this back into my signal chain because I really like the sound that is giving. Now, the way I'm really using this analog heat is by coming right here to this amp mode and using these eight different circuit selectors. Uh, these will give you different types of distortion to your signal. Now, it's not completely completely distorting your signal. You could just drive your signal however you want, however much of distortion you want to drive into your signal. And you could also use this dry wet uh, knob right here to back down on the distortion, kind of find your sweet spot with these knobs right here. Now my favorite circuits is gonna be the clean boost, the saturation, and the enhancement. The saturation is kind of uh, adding some tape saturation, and it could get very interesting as you're pushing your signal. What I'll do right now, I'm gonna actually uh, turn this off. So right now, this whole unit is bypassed, so we're gonna listen to the beat just compressed, just coming out of this unit, but is not doing anything to the signal. Now, uh, it does sound different. Uh, I'm sure you're able to hear the difference. Right here, you have your input and your output signal. The reason why you have your input and your output signal is because you wanna make sure you're gain matching what's coming in is what's coming out, so it's not, you're not being fooled by the signal just because it sounds louder, it sounds better, right? Uh, no, it's not the case. As you guys can see, the input and the output is matched up very good, so. Is the same volume, but it sounds a lot more present. It sounds a lot more closer. Now, uh, I am have my drive mode at about 12 o'clock, my uh, parallel. This is actually really cool because it's like parallel processing. So now my favorite way of using this is I drive the signal into that circuit until I hear it distorting. Once I hear it distorting a bit, I will back it down a few notches and just not make it as noticeable. Okay, now I'll back it up a little bit. Boom, and just leave it right there. Now we can AB that. Like I said, this one is my favorite, the saturation. Uh, it kind of sounds like tape saturation, which sounds very pleasing when you're driving it. Uh, but I also like using this clean boost. This clean boost is very clean. As a matter of fact, right here, I'll actually drive it at 100% and uh, it's gonna sound a, a little distorted, but it just sounds a lot more present. I'll back it down as we're finding the right mix with these two. I'm always looking at the inputs and outputs so I can be sure that I'm matching my signal. Now, again, these are minor touches that, for me, is important. Uh, now, when you go a little further with these different uh, circuits right here, they get a lot more aggressive, and the distortion is a lot more noticeable. But what I also listen and hear is that as some of these, you could play around with different beats. Every beat is gonna sound different, so you wanna go ahead and trial and error, but I'm gonna go through some of these settings. You're gonna hear how rough it gets as we're going through some of these, but sometimes it could dirty up your beat a bit, but it sounds good. Again, depending on the frequencies, the type of samples you're using, it could sound good. 
So I'll go ahead and leave it on my favorite setting, which is the saturation. Uh, that one's by far my favorite for at least the type of beats that I'm working with. Now, this is actually really fun because uh, I don't want to go too deep into the way I would master in the DAW, but I would use plugins. Uh, I believe the MTR by UAD. When I would use that plugin, it would add some, I have no idea what it is, but it just made my track sound so much bigger. And it's really cool because I would use that on all of my mastering and right here I have the same type of sound if not even better using just two knobs and just being able to dial my input and my dry wet signal and finding the sweet spot. Now this is another one of my favorite things about this analog heat is that once I add a little bit of saturation uh, you move over right here you got your filter and your EQ. Uh, using this there's a two band EQ right here you have your low frequencies and your high frequencies this is very, very powerful. Uh, this EQ right here is sounds very sweet. <laughs> That's honestly the way I can put it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and drive this EQ so you guys can listen to what is adding. <laughs> I mean, I'm pushing it all the way, and it still sounds great. I love that. Go to, to our lows. Woo. I'll back it down a bit. That is awesome. Like, I love that. I, I, I'm i really having fun right here. Again, um, I got my saturation, and then I have my EQ. And then right here at the bottom, you also have your high pass and low pass filter, which this filter sounds awesome. I don't know how to like put it in any other words, but I love what this filter is doing. I know it's just a filter, right? But I've just been using this filter and it's just different from any other filter that I've used. Uh, the MPC has filters, but they sound all right. But when I'm using the filter right here, it's just different. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and let's listen to what it gives us. And you can just uh, turn it back on or turn it off. Got all kinds of filters right here. You got your high pass. You got like a band filter. That is awesome. Like, you could do so much right there. I do use these filters. There's certain, again, every beat is different. On some beats, I actually like to uh, hit play. I'll add a low pass filter so it's not too bright. Make it a little more, I guess, lo fi. Somewhere right there. It just adds some EQ just so you could kind of compensate a little bit for the uh, highs that you drop with this low pass filter. And it just sounds awesome. Now, this is with it on with it off. So this is my main setup with this analog heat. Uh, there's so much more you can do, uh, but right now this is kind of like my mastering setup chain uh, for lack of better words. But there is actually one other feature that's really, really cool is uh, the side chain compression. There's, I guess they call it like pseudo compression. Um, there's, that's actually been really fun. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do it. It kind of gives you that pumping effect. Uh, I will go into my envelopes and on my envelopes, I will uh, put my AD and once I have it on AD, I'm not, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna hit play so we get some signal once i have it right there i'll drop down my trigger until i notice the threshold is going above the trigger threshold i can see that is uh triggering this uh compression because it's showing me right here that something is being triggered by those transients once i have that i'll bang through to the second page i'll go from none to uh preset volume once i have that engaged I could use this depth uh, knob right here to see how much I want it to be pumping. Once I have that set up, I jump into this bank one and I can adjust my attack and release. There you go, it's kind of adding that pump effect. That's with it. That's without it. 
Now, every beat is different. When I try to add this pseudo compression, uh, sometimes it just won't work. But right here, the transients you know, are peeking through and the kicks, the snares. So it's tr being triggered, I would say, fairly nice. I'll go ahead and A-B the process of the mastering setup versus without it. So that's it right there. Uh, I would go ahead and print this, and if anything, as a matter of fact, uh, this is 99.9% .9 of this process is standalone. If anything that I would add in a DAW after I print this would be a limiter, just so I can kind of bring my volume up to a, a, an audible uh, level, and I put it out and I you know release the track. This right here has been fun for me. This has been something that I'm looking forward to when I'm making music. Why? Because I'm producing my beat, I'm mixing, I'm mastering, I'm kind of adding all my touches in one place. I'm not stemming out my beats. I don't even remember when was the last time I stemmed out a beat so I could professionally mix it in a DAW. I'm doing all of this right here with what you see on top of this desk. Now, by all means, do not feel like you need to have this. Uh, this is just something that works for me because I don't have time to mix in the computer. You know, I, I live right here in a studio bedroom apartment with my wife and my daughter, and time for me is something that I cherish the most. So this right here gives me the best return for my time, and I love the way it sounds. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are interested on anything that you guys saw right here, go down to the description of the video. I will leave some links, so if you guys are interested, you guys can pick some of this gear up. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch y'all on our next video. Peace.